I'm Ryan Milliken from Hardway Performance, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. I'm Demetri Miller with No Zone Diesel. This is Anthony Rings from XDP. This is Jaron Holder from Holder Down Performance. Corey Willis from TPI. I'm Drew with D&J Precision Machine. I'm Pinky. And you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. Diesel Podcast. You're listening to The Diesel Podcast. The Diesel Podcast. The one and only Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We are so humbled by the response you guys are giving us. You've got our last 10 episodes in the top 50 on iTunes for in the automotive category, and you've kept us pretty much in the top five for the last four, five, six weeks. And we want to encourage you guys to keep telling us who you want to hear from, topics that are interesting to you, even follow-ups to podcasts we've done. We check every iTunes rating, every message on Instagram or Facebook. So keep blowing us up. Keep uh, letting us know what you want to hear about, and we'll get that content to you. Before we get to the podcast, we want to give a special shout-out to two of our sponsors. The first is BD Diesel. They have a lot of cool products, but this one really caught my attention. It's for a 2003 to 2007 48RE, and it's a tap shifter that mounts right on the column, looks completely factory. You can upshift and downshift when you want. It's a really cool product. Go to dieselperformance.com. You can check it out there. And also Dan's Diesel Performance. Dan's has a ton of turbos in stock, no matter what your Duramax you have, whether it's something you need for towing, street performance, or you want something for full-on race applications, they've got it. You can check them out at dansdieselperformance.com. All right, guys, let's get to this first-gen Cummins talk and see exactly where this truck's going and where it started. Skylar, I'm excited to talk about this this truck build that you got going on, and we, we've seen you on Instagram and the the build itself and wanted to bring your story and your truck to diesel nation <laughs> how you doing today i'm doing good uh thanks for having me on yeah let's just start like right at the beginning what year and make truck are you working on and why did you pick that particular truck to just build and have fun with so um it's a 1993 w250 it's a single cab uh it's got about 170,000 miles on it right now um, although some people might not think of, think it uh, has that many miles on it because of the outside, the way it looks. It's uh, got a lot of patina on the outside, and I kind of like that. It gives a character. <laughs> it's, yeah, 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 definitely. A lot of people uh, ask me, you know, are you keeping it that way or are you painting it? And I said it'd probably be a shame to, to paint over it like it is. So <laughs> I think it makes a lot of people happy. But uh, I kind of picked it because... Uh, you know, just the simplicity of uh, the powertrain, basically, uh, basically it. <laughs> I just That's like all. keeping things simple, and uh, I like being able to do stuff on my own, and it kind of allows me to do it that way. That's what's so cool about the first gens and the second gen trucks, is they're a bit more rough around the edges, say, compared to a 2018 truck, but there's beauty in the simplicity with the mechanical injection system the transmission is very straightforward and you can like you said you can work on them you don't need an electronic scan tool to do things and reset stuff and you can just jump right in yep now on this first gen i wanted to ask you what are your goals for building it what are you putting it together for and making parts decisions based around is there a certain power number that you're looking for Eventually, I'd probably like to say I could have uh, 500 to the wheel. Um, I know with um, the first gens and the rotary pump, um, the second gen tr- trucks with the P pump, they just have so much more power potential. And um, I'm kind of toying around right now. I'm having a kind of an issue a little bit about finding someone that wants to talk about the 14 millimeter setups with the rotary bump. And um, I know Shide sells one. You know, I could just go out and buy theirs. There's also another company called, there's, well, I only know of one company that sells performance parts for VE, but it's called Rock and Tech uh, California. And uh, they don't really sell complete 14 mil setups. They sell the parts to build them. And I can't really, I'm having a little bit of trouble, but I'm going to keep on working on it, trying to find someone that, uh, is um, experienced in that and wants to share the info on exactly what goes on inside the pumps and what you need to do to do that. 
That 500 horse mark's a nice spot for a daily driver, especially if you're going to tow with it. Is It's fun, but it's still in that reliable range where not wasting fuel, you know, you're not having to get really too far into the the setup, so to speak, or worry about the longevity of the components that came on the motor. You know, in the transmission, you can also build that around that power level pretty pretty easy. Yeah, I, I can, and uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So I've never really rebuilt a transmission in my life, but I kind of just, when I jump into a project, I figure, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do it. Don't set your mind to say you can't do it. you got to work around and ask people. If you can't find the right person to ask you about how to, any project, you don't have to be just transmissions. And if you need to find someone that knows, because, like, I learned how, you know, I go and I put my hands on the parts and I see how they fit together. You just got to work at it. you got to have service manuals. It really helps out. There's so much information out there between manuals like you mentioned and being able to call places or social media which is where i first saw your build and i think the other day you had some videos tearing apart the transmission or putting it back together and you're showing some things that are so helpful to see you know it's, i don't remember what it was an issue with with the stock component i don't remember if it was a drum or what it was oh yeah so that's your overdrive direct uh, clutch hub and that. That's the thing that fits around your big 800-pound spring. And, like, I, I knew I needed a shop press, so I went to Harbor Freight, got a shop press, and it worked okay for taking it out. But there's kind of some, some things like that you have to learn by doing them. And when I went to go put it back together, of course, not, no, no one would have ever told me, but you kind of need a constant downward pressure to press the overdrive sun, the sun gear with the spring and the direct clutch hub down because it binds in the bore because the spring sits in between two the two pieces and it cocks in the bore so I'm like crap <laughs> and one step forward and one step back and uh <laughs> that's kind of how it goes sometimes but it's uh, i'm sure it's something that through that you're going to know that truck inside and out probably every component on it <laughs> yeah i want to so but for the turbo setup what what kind of choices or, or what have you been thinking on the air side um there's a lot of choices out there i literally just saw diesel power source just uploaded their new uh vgt setups for the s300 and s3 and s400 uh turbos that's really cool i don't know if that's something i'm going to go with i just thought it was really cool but i kind of like sticking with the uh, uh Keeping it whole set, keeping it with what Cummins came with. I know there's a lot of options out there from Borg Warner and stuff, and they're really good, but I kind of want to be a little different. And I'm thinking of going with a whole set. Uh, it's an HX52. I believe it's a uh, 6771 with a 16-millimeter uh, exhaust housing. So that should be pretty neat. It'll move some air for you. It'll definitely. Yeah support power level that uh, that you're looking at <laughs> i think so now when you started this build how did it start was it something where you had it planned for a while or maybe you know you needed to replace something and kind of one thing led to another and it's turned into a full build oh shoot this is a long story i've had a lot of problems with the a518 that came behind this truck um the truck sat for a very long time before i got it and um it used to be a Chevron station service truck in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, or it used to be a uh, Mississippi Department of Transportation truck. I don't know which, but if you look on the right fender, there's a bunch of letters and stuff that have gone and faded, and you can still see them where the primer is and stuff. So the truck really sat a lot, and it's had a couple problems that have came to light because of this. And uh, I've had overdrive housing snap. I've had two of those. I've had uh, transfer case studs back out and snap off actually on a trip up to Ohio. So I pulled into my grandparents' driveway and transmission fluid was everywhere. And I didn't know where it was coming from at the time, and that was my only vehicle. So basically I put a bunch of flex seal on it on the bottom and drove it back. 
on borrow time. And when I got started thinking about doing 47 swap and stuff that I read on the forums, I said, I'm going to eventually go for it. And now that's what I'm doing. That is such a popular, it's a popular swap and it's talked about a lot. How, how do you, do you do it? Like what, what kind of things did you have to think about to go from the 518 to the, the 47? So the main difference for a 47 and a five and the 46, 518 is you're going to have a lockout torque converter with the 47. And the lockout torque converter is an inch longer than your non-lockout. So what you need to do to put a 47 or a 48 for that matter behind a first gen, um, off the top of my head, there's you need a first first and foremost you need an engine adapter plate from a second gen truck. Uh, you need uh, the starter, the flex plate from a second gen truck as well. Uh, also, because you're going with that, you need to notch the frame on the on, on the for the starter to clear. Um, there's uh, a seal on the back of the overdrive housing on the A518 that uh um no 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 excuse me there's a seal on the back i can't remember dang you need to machine you need to either machine the flange on your on your a518 housing flat because there's a weep hole the transmission seals i think on the output shaft on the on the newer transmission so you either need to machine that flat take care of that weep hole on the bottom or just put a bunch of rtv in there is what some guys do and of course, since everything has moved back about an inch, you have to modify the slots in your trans mount plate on your cross member. Some guys make an entirely new mount. Some guys choose to modify it. It's up to you. Um, one thing, one thing I've learned and I've, I saw a lot of people do is they don't keep the the, the A518 bottle valve lever and shift lever. And that presents a problem because whenever they go to put everything back together, the um, the throttle valve and the shift lever is uh, clogged differently. So, and then try finding those parts. You have to find a first gen or something like that in the junkyard. And uh, another big thing is your um, your valve body control. If you have an electron valve body, you either have to run a controller from someone else or do a manual valve body. Overall, that's not too bad co- compared to some of the other transmission swaps, whether it's because it's more complex with the electronics or because the electronics on the truck are hard to get around, like on the new ones, um, you know, trying to put a 47 or 48 behind them. So that, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward. I'm sure finding, like, the adapter plate and modifying some of the, the other parts are, are, aren't too bad to do. Yeah, and of course you gotta, there's one other thing, you gotta figure out how you're gonna wire up your, tor- your torque converter lock up and overdrive. Most guys usually put them on a toggle switch somewhere in the cab. Some guys even put them on a floor switch, like the old school trucks use the dimmer, mm-hmm. the light dimmer on the floor, some guys do that too. It's such a huge benefit to have that lock up converter though for economy, lowering transmission temperatures, but then if you're gonna throw some power at it, you know. Definitely, you know. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been working on the truck? When did when did it all start? Uh, for the 47 swap and all the engine stuff, um, right after I got home from a deployment was basically when I said, you know, screw it, we're, I'm doing what I've always wanted to do, and there's never going to be a time better than now. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, those, those first gens, there's something about them that's so classic. But then you have a lot of aftermarket support for it. Maybe not quite as much as the second gen P pumped trucks, mm-hmm. but there's so many options for turbos, injectors, other upgrades. You know, you're swapping a 47 behind it and and uh, making a, a stout setup for it. And it seems to be a trend too, where a lot of our listeners we, we hear from them and they're they're going back to first and second gens because they want the simplicity. 
that that you had talked about on the uh, on the aesthetics. What do you have planned for the outside of the truck? Um, pretty much just keeping it how it is. I mean, they don't really make too too many you know aftermarket parts, like you said, for first gens and stuff like that. But um, um, I a, a while ago. I actually got a set of uh, my grail wheels, I call them, I guess. And that's pretty much all I wanted for the truck. They're um, 20 by 12 Pacer Baja Champs in a negative 51 uh, backspace. They don't make them anymore. I don't know where you can find them. I searched for about around three years to find them. I did. I could find them. But something would be wrong, like they'd be a 10 wide or they'd be an 8 by 170 bolt pattern. I never found them. But a good buddy of mine, uh, Matt Brazil, out in uh, Layton, California, actually reached out to me. And he knew that I was looking for a long time. He said, oh, yeah, I'll look. Eventually, he just hit me up one day, and he's like, hey, I got them. I was like, sweet. <laughs> that, I love the wheels, and every <laughs> everyone else does, too. A lot of people ask me if they're for sale and stuff or where they can find them. He found them at a goat farm out in California, so <laughs> that's what I tell him. <laughs> the building the truck, are are you doing it yourself, or you got some buddies helping you out, or you know some local shops, or? Yeah, I got a. I live in uh, Mariester, Florida, so local to me. I've got Hardway, which is literally uh, about five minutes down the road from me. Um, that I don't really get any help from them. I haven't really asked. Uh, but um, I've got some buddies, you know, from co-work, co-workers and stuff like that, helped me build the truck. My buddy Corey Lewis, um, Patrick Sampson, and um, a bunch of other guys. So everyone, I want to thank everyone that's ever helped me turn a wrench on this truck. My buddy Aaron Huffmaster, too, helped me just pull the engine just a couple of weeks ago. And um, basically, I'm doing, I do a lot of the stuff myself, so, and, um Suncoast is, of course, down the road from me as well. They've been helping me a lot with this build, this transmission build. If you need parts, they're just down the road. <laughs> yep. Every day after work, like, not every day, but most times, I'll be down there for like an hour just hanging out and talking. Did uh, Did you get a tour? I've always wanted to go there and get a tour. <laughs> oh, gosh, their shop is immaculate. I mean... First, like when I first got here to this area, I used to go down to Sun Coast just so I could buy a T-shirt and to talk to some people. I couldn't afford to do any like transition work at the time or anything like that, but I just wanted to be a part of you know whatever it was that was going on there. I used to. I'm not ashamed to say it. I used to go down there just to buy a T-shirt to talk to them down there and just to get to know them and you know, put a name to a face and everything so that when eventually I did get down there and started spending money there, and they would help me and stuff like that. So you got to get out and network with the with your community, and they'll end up sharing the knowledge with you, and that's what I've applied. They, I think they just moved into a new shop not long ago, maybe within the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. A, a bigger one. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty huge. They've got stacks and stacks and stacks of cores all lined <laughs> up. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> well, I'm sure when your truck's done, you know, Ryan and the guys at Hardway go over there and jump on the roller, see what it does. Oh, yeah. I plan on it. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a good group of guys over there. We've had Ryan on the podcast a few times. It's it's been cool seeing what he's doing with his Nova. Oh, yeah. That, 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 car's, that car's awesome. He just he just bought the a local dragway Emerald Coast dragway, and uh, it had been like vacant for years. I used to go there when I was a kid, but um, it had since shut down or something like that. And he bought it up, and I was really excited when he did. And they started having events out there. Uh, they got Diesel Thunder out there. I'm pretty excited about the uh, Outlaw Diesel event that they're having. I think it's September 14th and 15th this year i've been seeing on social media a lot of events that uh that he's working on for for that that racetrack and you know he's passionate about racing and 
it's there's a lot of racers in that area. A lot of guys that through the podcast or just through social media. You know, that's warmer weather. You guys can race all year round and or for most of the year and and everything like that. But we were chatting earlier, and you had mentioned that you were dropping. Was it the motor off at the machine shop today? Yeah, I, well, no, not the motor. My head and my uh, rocker arm pedestals to get cut for studs. And uh, just to deck the head and do valve job and make sure it uh, magnifies make sure it had no cracks. Don't want to put anything on there. It's going to be problematic in the future because I have no idea where this truck is going to be in the next five years. Today. I don't have no, I have no idea. I want to make sure, make sure everything is good the first time. It'll definitely save you some work later. <laughs> definitely. If you were to give some advice to guys out there that they want to get a first gen, they want to modify it. What are some some tips that you would give them as they either look for the truck, you know, or, or just searching for one to buy, and then as they get into modifying it? So um, everything's pretty simple. You can do it with a, a screwdriver, you know, out there in your in your garage. And there's um, one one of the best things I've ever did to this pump. Say is a I think it's a 3200 RPM governor spring goes inside your injection pump. And basically, the, the stock pumps, they come with like a, I believe it's a, around a 25 to 2800 RPM spring. And what that spring does, the governor spring, is it limits your fuel cutoff to that RPM. And you can actually feel if you rev the truck up above that, it'll kind of drop off. Sometimes you can feel it. And when you put that 30, 3,200 RPM spring in there, there's, of course, they sell other RPMs, but you should never go pretty much above 3,200 RPM unless you're doing valve train work. Um, you don't want valve float. That could be bad. But, um, I'll tell, I'll tell everybody a really, it's kind of an embarrassing story about when I installed my 3,200 RPM governor spring, I made a dumb mistake, and I messed up a little lever inside the pump top when I put it back on and it totally sheared it off when I put the bolts back in and I had to buy the injection pump. So make sure when you go in there, use a use fishing line to hold that damn lever back so you don't crush it and break it. That was a very hard lesson I had to learn. <laughs> it's kinda of embarrassing, <laughs> but hopefully it'll help someone else out there. I've actually seen a couple guys that have done it themselves and they were like, Wait, you did that too? And I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's the only way to learn, though. Sometimes you just got to jump in and yep, just do it. Some other things is um, these old trucks, you know, the seals get worn out in them. you got your ASC air fuel control that's on top of the injection pump. That needs to be leak-free. Um, I had a bad leak on mine. Didn't know it for a little while until I actually, like, why is this thing <laughs> not working right? It's not really responding. But that you need to check your ASC for leaks, because that's how that whole engine, that injection pump operates is that boost pressure. If it has a leak, it's not going to, it's not going to fuel properly. And, uh, of course, there's that fuel screw everyone talks about, the one that'll make it run away. And, um, uh, mine right now is set just, just below runaway. Some people can't get them to run away with the stock spring. I think the hungry diesel sells a long, the stock screw, I mean, the hungry diesel sells a longer screw that you can get, but um, that's that was probably right around there with the governor spring, one of the best modifications for power that I've done was turning that fuel screw. You just want to do it a little bit at a time. Make sure you have a board handy to put on the turbo. And um, uh, the timing advance on the pump. It'll, um, you loosen up the three bolts on the, the timing case and, um, you rotate the entire pump towards the head and that'll uh, advance your timing. You only want to do that like maybe in a quarter or an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch at a time and test, go back, test, adjust it as needed. It'll lower your EGPs and make you run a little bit more efficient. Um, one thing, Specific to first hands that that I've seen a lot of people use is um, 
uh, DNR Customs TPS delete. There's a bottle positioning sensor on top of the automatic trucks, and it goes bad a lot. Um, it's like a $250 sensor, I believe, so most people just opt to get the, um, the delete for it. And what it is is basically a potentiometer. It's a, a dial switch, I guess you could call it, and um, it basically acts as your bottle position sensor. You can basically set it and forget it, you know, <laughs> and you don't have to mess with it while you're driving and I was actually I was actually on a road trip going back from Texas and I lost overdrive. I had to drive a drive from Louisiana to Florida without without overdrive. That was pretty fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you just put that in there and you set it and it does what it's supposed to do. I don't ever really have to mess with it. It's a great product. Those are those are a lot of good a lot of good tips and like with with the fuel system and how you modified it. How much did it change, like, the power and the responsiveness versus when the truck was bone stock and you just got it? I mean, when I first got the truck, it was so slow. I mean, I think the I think that horsepower rating on those, on the first gens is, like, 180, if I remember correctly. I don't remember off the top of my head. But it's something really, really low like that, and it's just a dog. Um, can't get out of its own way if you try to pass someone and the left lane, but when I, whenever I did all that stuff, um, it really woke it up. I never, I don't have any baseline numbers to go off by. I kind of just go off the butt dyno. Were EGTs under control after you, after you modified the pump? Yeah, yeah. Um, it never really, uh, never really gets to where I need to let off of it unless, you know, you stay on the throttle for, you know, a long time. They climb a, a good bit because this truck, when I bought it, it had aftermarket injectors. I don't know the size of them, but um, you just got to be careful. Yeah, the EGT EGT part is what you know. We all we all keep an eye on them. Don't want to melt the piston or get it too hot and damage something in the head or anything like that. And that's what's so cool about those first gens is you probably didn't have a whole lot of money, say compared to a common rail into modifying it, you know, to pick up, pick up some power and, and that's such a cool part about them. Yeah. I would say half the valves, twice the class. <laughs> we, we'd also <laughs> talked before, you know, we were talking about a podcast. You were telling me how passionate that you are about the truck and working on it. And that's something that's so important. And I think what really makes the diesel community so special is our attachment to the truck and having a vision for it and getting it there. And I wanted to ask you, you know, go more in depth with that, the excitement and the passion that you have for working on this truck and putting it together and, you know, figuring out, you know, how to tear down the tranny, how to get it installed, all the different things that you have planned for this vehicle. So the thing, the thing is, um, I'm a mechanic for the air force. I work on, a whole lot of power strokes and stuff like that. That's one of the main reasons I got a comments too, because I don't want to work on power strokes all the time. But <laughs> the um, sorry guys, but um, <laughs> the um, the main tip that I can give to people, as I think I mentioned it before, is um, you know if you go into a project, you can't go into it thinking that you don't have what you take, what it takes to get it done. You might not at the beginning, but one of the main things i found is you need to get out there in the community, whether you have a shop around you or something like that. You just need to go there, you know, go to, like, their meets and stuff like that and meet the people. Don't just go there and be, like, a regular customer. You want to you wanna get to know the people, and people will be more inclined to share information with you. You know, if you're, if you're really passionate and you, and you show that, and um, it's just Sun Coast has been really good with me. I've, you know, I go back there in the in the in their in their training room, their disassembly room, and stuff like that, and they show me, you know, this is where this needs to go, this is where this needs to go, and I can actually do what's going on there. And then I go back and I do it. Yeah, sharing sharing that knowledge and and expertise is 
we all you know we all start someplace we all have that first truck and whether we talk to someone you know or you, you know you're lucky you've got a shop close to you that's been building these things forever probably since they were new Definitely. and <laughs> you can go talk to a guy who's been doing it for 30 years or social media which is where it's it's changed it a lot and the people you know you have a build page and people can interact with you there or ask you questions and I, wanted to, I love it yeah that's what's so that's what's so awesome and when i was scrolling through it you know i was I was just like, wow, that's really cool to see this video or this thing that you're doing. So I wanted to have you say your Instagram name. So guys out there that have first gen want to do what you're doing, think on your page, watch, watch the progress, and ask you questions and and share that knowledge. Yeah, definitely. I love talking trucks with people, no matter what it is, especially first gen. So, but um, you can follow the build. Uh, my Instagram is uh, at. Skyler, my first name, S K Y L A R eight two seven underscore seven. And uh hit me up there if you have any questions or I don't know I don't know a whole lot now. I'm learning, but you know, I know a little bit about the platform and I can definitely help people out and like I said, I love talking trucks. No matter if you just wanna, you know, bullshit about, you know, what you got going on or specific questions, I I definitely love helping out people. Man, that's awesome. And we're excited to follow your build you got to keep us updated on it especially when you're getting close to firing it up taking it for that drive and i cannot wait (laughs) you have no idea (laughs) i just want to get in it and ride down the road with my arm out the window (laughs) (laughs) and swing by hardway and put it on the rollers (laughs) yeah definitely (laughs) awesome man I, i appreciate you talking to us about the build sharing it with us and you know getting to know you and and the build and and your goals for it it's it's really cool it's it's inspirational you know it's it's these these stories and and these projects that make diesel what it is we we appreciate your time definitely don't forget diesel fans make sure and check out that 48re tap shifter from bd diesel it's at dieselperformance.com you can read all about it you can even order it directly on the website and dan's diesel performance with turbo kits for any year Duramax. Summer's rolling around, it's time to tow, you know, go go to sled pulls, drag racing, things like that. Now's the perfect time to upgrade. Go to dansdieselperformance.com, you can check those all out. Till next time, keep the shiny side up.